Welcome back. This is going to be specifically for the coloring. Now, at the last, at the end of the last video, we had already cleaned up our lines, so we expanded everything. We used the eraser tool. Uh, we also went into Pathfinder. We united all of our black lines, and then we also went up to Object. We went down to Live Paint, and then we clicked Make. So we are ready to use the Live Paint bucket. And the live paint bucket super super easy once you have made it it's basically just going around it'll light up red and you can click so the first step that I'm gonna do is we're just gonna basically color everything solid uh, if and, and keep in mind most of our black lines especially like uh, in the hooves in the the open areas so there's a lot of things right now that uh, you wouldn't necessarily be able to use so what we're gonna do is simply just go through uh, and we are uh, coloring everything we expanded everything, and now we are, uh, we basically ungrouped all of our live paint buckets. So that's kind of what we just did, and our goal here is to just get our color on its own layer. And I'm just gonna color this pink, or a different color, just so you can see it on the, uh, on the white background. Now keep in mind we have our black lines above. I've uh, minimized that, so on our layers palette, you can see inking, and there's no eyeball next to it. And what we're looking to do is basically break it down into shapes. So under your eraser tool, you have this nice little uh, saw tool. And this is just to basically kind of replace our, let's say uh, if you're gonna do Pathfinder, a lot of times you'll see tutorials that do it that way. And so all we need to do is we have to select the area we want. We're gonna click on the saw, and then you basically just trace, and it will kind of give you a nice little smooth line by the way. Uh, and then it'll cut it out for you. Okay, so reasons right now. One, I didn't select it. So you wanna make sure it's selected, make sure it's red, and then when you're using the saw tool, you wanna make sure you're going all the way through those edges. And then you'll be able to select a red, come back over with your selection tool, and then you should be able to just use your color splotches, and then you'll be able to color it. So this is for the color on its uh, backside. But anything you want a just different color I think this is a really, really easy way of doing it. Uh, also, with us minimizing the uh, ink lines, you can kind of see real easily where uh, you can use the saw tool and where the things have to be connected. And notice we're going pretty slow with this, and that's just to keep it uh, nice and smooth, so you don't want to rush this. And the major trick is just to make sure you go all the way through the, the red lines. So you should be able to see the red um, or whatever color your layer is. But you just want to go all the way through, and then you'll uh, it'll work out. If for some odd reason it's fighting you, just go back, double check that you did in fact go all the way through. A lot of times, if you're zoomed out, you won't be able to see it, and so there's this little tiny gap, and then you won't be able to color it specifically. Okay, so once we've done that, that's actually a really easy process. I think you guys are going to like that a lot better than the... Uh, pathfinder and making new shapes and cutting things out and minusing front so that's a way way easier of a process and so everything's just separated at this point so what we're gonna do is we have our color palette kind of set up and we're just gonna come through and with our swatches we could just change the color now for our black lines if we actually had everything connect then we would be able to use the live paint bucket uh, to do that but since we want kind of these free-flowing lines uh, and, and cartooning not all the time it's connected so this is kind of a nice way of doing it so we're just gonna come in we're gonna change our swatches and depending on what your final kind of outcome would be if you want a flat color then you could really just stop it right here so you can just do your knife do your saw and then uh, call it a day now we're gonna add some cast shadows we're gonna add some gradients to it uh, and we're gonna do some transparent gradients so whatever your base color is you just want to make sure that that is kind of where it's going to set up. And I'm going to change the hoof as well as the, the spot to some darker, more cow-esque colors. Let's just poof and do that. Color, color, color. And also keep in mind, this is going to be a pretty much a full color image. If you had a, a logo that was going to be just black and white or a one color, then you could kind of modify it that way. Okay, so we're just coming through, and again, we're just picking different colors. This is very, very easy. Once you've done kind of the separation of it, uh, this coloring process is really easy. Now, when we do, now keep in mind, the, the layer above is uh, is still the inking, 
And what I'm going to do for the gradient is I copied and pasted it. You can see that I pulled out the shape just so you can see the, the concept. So I controlled C, controlled F. So I'm basically copying. And then if you go edit, you're going to paste in front. And then you can add a gradient. Since we are adding a transparent gradient, and we're just changing the opacity, by the way. And that uh, gradient is in your the, the right tool menu bar. And we're just going to, for the white, we're going to make it a little bit more transparent. So this, these are going to be very, very subtle gradients. And I'm going to do radial. I'm going to come over to the gradient tool here. And the gradient tool just gives you more options on direction. And that's a lot easier of a, a way. So we've got the, the one on the right-hand side will kind of give you the colors. Uh, you can kind of modify the direction, and that's the one that's hanging up above the layers menu at this point in time. So that's the gradient menu. And then the gradient tool lets you change those directions. And these are real subtle. Now keep in mind, these are all transparent, and it's going to let that light blue below shine through. If you don't make a new layer, sometimes it gives you this really weird kind of uh, abrupt stop. And so this is kind of a nice way and uh, of doing it. Also keep in mind, we're going to be adding some background shapes. So you can, uh, especially with the transparency, you don't want transparent uh, gradients in sh shining through to your background. If you're going to make it opaque or if you want it to be less subtle, you could totally do that as well. Keep in mind, it's your artwork. You can do whatever you want. So we're just switching up some colors, and again, we're just changing up the opacity. Whenever you're doing radial gradients, just kind of think of a fake light source. A lot of times with my new students, I'll have them draw, physically draw out a little tiny sun with an arrow, and so they know which way the light's coming from. So right from here, everything is coming from the upper left-hand side, and so that means the the cast shadows are going to be in a different way. All right, so let's do some cast shadows. Now for the little cast shadow uh, behind him, all that was was selecting everything. So I selected all of the cow, filled it all in black, and then I united it. So now we just have basically a, a silhouette. So I have that shape. I built a circle, and then I just uh, minus the front. Or I actually, uh, I believe I actually did the, uh, wherever the other one is. The, the exclude, I think, is the one it is. And that'll basically cut out everything that's uh, outside of the circle. So that's just using the Pathfinder. And if you don't know anything about the, the Pathfinder, you easily could just do the eraser tool and then just erase it outside of the uh, the circle. So you can have a circle behind everything and then go from there. Now keep in mind we still have our inking layer above and so what we're gonna be able to do is do some transparent color shadows and we're just gonna send those behind the ink. So we're gonna, you're gonna notice that I'm not gonna be as specific with the pen tool. I just want that to kinda coast below or right around our, our inking lines. So I'm just going to kind of go in the direction I want. And again, this is just so we don't have to do the Pathfinder. I'm going to change the opacity. To right, I think it was right around 50%. And then I'm going to send it to backwards. So we have inking layer on top. Then we have that cast shadow. And then we have our color layer. So anywhere you think there might be a cast shadow, under the chin, armpits. We're going to go a little under the udder here. This is just going to be a little subtle. And I'm going to delete this one. I didn't like how it played out to our gray. This is just another little easy way of uh, focusing on uh, cast shadows. And since we are sending it behind the inking layer, you don't have to worry really about most of your lines. If you zoom in enough, you can just do straight lines with the pen tool. So if you're uncomfortable with the pen tool, Click, 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 click. So it's real fast with the straight lines because those are going to get covered up anyway. And then you just have to focus on whatever is going to be showing. So I'm just using the eraser tool and I'm going to get rid of most of this one. 
And the answer is yes, you could totally copy the shadow color, paste in front, minus front, that would also work as well. So if you are familiar with the Pathfinder, you could totally do that too. Okay, that's just the eraser tool. I think we're just going to do one other little uh, shadow under the udder, and we're going to call it a day. Nope, we'll do one for the year. With the cast shadows, too, uh, other little things, you keep in mind you don't have to follow exactly what my shapes are but you should sort of mimic the shape that's being cast so if you're looking at the ear or if you're looking at the side of the face try and mimic the shapes that you think the cast shadow would be all right let's do the udder and then let's call it a day and again the pathfinder i would just play around with it major trick with the Pathfinder, especially if you're minusing front, is always remember to copy, paste in front, and then subtract. Otherwise, you're just going to cut, delete the entire shape. So that's probably the biggest mistake I see beginners make. Other little thing you could do, instead of the pen tool, you could do the blob brush. That would be an, another good solution right here. That would be a very easy uh, alternative if you don't like the pen tool. Okay, I like it. So at this point, file save, call it a day. Keep in mind, you guys should go to uh, Adobe Col Color. Uh, you guys can totally pick out different color schemes. That would be a fun little option for you as well. And uh, again, if you guys like these tutorials, make sure you guys subscribe. That means a lot. Make sure you guys are commenting. That being, I do read those. Uh, and then also, if you have any uh, tidbits and or if you have any suggestions that you would like to see in the future, let me know. I am kind of building up my, uh, my video tutorial library at this point for my next group of students. And uh, we've got a nice little uh, cow milkshake character here. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, again, I'll see you on the next video.